Well, welcome everybody. Hope you're uh, having a good day. This will be our half a flow practice, so this is our intermediate practice. A little more challenging and more engaging than the foundation practice, so mindfully applying. Always coming into the point that's comfortable for you. Feel free to play around, but no pressure, no force. Be as it is, however, it is necessary even for you to be in a seated position. Crossing the legs if comfortable, your main awareness is lifting your spine, sitting as tall as you can. If comfortable, adopting a mudra, your hand gesture, thumb and next finger together is one such variation. Allow your hands rest closer to your knees. Sitting nice and tall. Eyes closed, mouth closed. And we'll just take a moment, give yourself as much time as you need to really land and to arrive. As you work towards creating a little space for your practice. Know that you're not trying to suppress, you're not trying to fight away any thoughts. Instead, we'll just encourage a shift of our awareness. As you bring your awareness to the body. Just notice how the physical body feels. Many areas of tension, holding, discomfort. Be there for a moment longer. Making a similar inquiry to the condition of the mind. How is your day been so far? How is that influencing the mind? And with this attuned awareness, we'll bring the attention upon the breath. But simply the intention of just witnessing and experiencing the breath. And we'll do so at the very centre of the belly. And just witness without trying to create the reaction to body, to breath, of the belly. How belly rise with the inhale. And the belly falls with the exhale. As the belly rises, mentally repeat, breathing in. As the belly falls, breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. And continue with this awareness for a few moments. Mind wanders, don't fight it each time. Be patient. Smoothly bring it back. Belly rises, breathing in. Belly falls, breathing out. Namaskar and Mudra. If it's comfortable for you, hands are lightly pressed. And take a moment to set an intention, your sankalpa, or dedication for your practice. Release your hands. Chin works towards the chest. 
few gentle blinks op and we'll be right here. Namaste. We'll softly raise the knees up. Maintain the legs crossed over. The knees come high, thighs in towards your chest. You can go for the thighs, you can go for the knees. If it feels good, go for a wrist or a forearm. Lift one foot, that feels good. Raise the second foot. The shoulders are free. Focusing on the point to help maintain the balance. We'll begin to put a little conscious effort into the breathing if you haven't already done so. In through the nose and out through the nose. You're very comfortable. Apply Ujjayi breathing throughout your entire practice. Now you can remain as you are, but if this is comfortable, perhaps you can bring your knees a little closer to the point that you can hook your left arm around the left knee and the hand will reach over and it'll grab the right shin. If this is a challenge or uncomfortable, both feet can be grounded, if you're mindfully applying the feet remain up. Your right hand to your right side behind, as you inhale you sit tall, as you exhale a little twist. Very comfortable the gaze squat. Be there for a moment. Inhale smoothly back to center. Changing sides, so the right arm wraps around the right leg, and then if comfortable, the hand reaches and are placed on the shin or towards the knee. Left hand, left side behind. Inhale, you're sitting tall. Exhale, a little twist. It feels good. The gaze follow. Breathe. Smoothly back. We'll ground the feet and gently come to standing in whichever way is necessary for you. Take the time. No rush as you come up. We'll move towards the front edge of the mat. Coming up foot distance or so from the front of the mat, feet together, toes and heels are touch, comfortable. Hands to the sides of the body, gaze is front, chin is a little back. Come to Tadasana for a moment. Begin with your feet. Your feet are your foundation. Shift the weight around in all four directions. Experience how you're sharing the weight. Can you share it evenly? Have the hips a little back. Face the pelvic lightly drawn. Sternum a little back. Gaze front. Breathe. Mentally prepare for a few rounds of the sun salutation. Breath to move it as best you can, but no pressure or force. Breathe as much as you need to. First round, rather steady. Namaskar asana. Palms press in front of the chest. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, Urdhva So Real slow and steady. Begin to extend the arm. In line with the air if you can. A very mild bend in the knees. Top the pelvic under. Slight back bend. Gentle gaze up. Your next exhale, palms to face front, knees soft, feel and work from the hip. Hands either side of the feet, while your fingertips of the palms release the head and fold deeply. Your next inhale, step the right leg back, quite a good distance. Ground the right knee on top of the toes, gaze is front. The next exhale, top the toes, lift the knee. Left knee right, the way shoulder over the wrist. Hold the breath outer, keep exhaling, ground the knees. Squeeze the elbows close, welcome thighs, belly, chest, forehead, a rolling of the shoulders, hips tucked slightly up and back. Next inhale, lift the head, gaze front, shift front a little first, then raise head and chest, roll the shoulder and tuck the toes. Exhale, tuck the toes, bend the knee, push the hip up and back, Buddharasana, be there for a moment, breathe really well, a long and steady breath. One, two, three, knees soft as you need to, four, five, as you inhale, step the right foot front, no rush in getting in there. Knees over the ankle, ground the left knee, on top of the toes, gaze front. 
Next exhale, top the to toes. Left knee right, feet together, falling deeply. A good bend in the knee, extend the arm to be in line with the ear, palms to face, inhale, coming up. Palms to press, knees remain a little soft, top the pelvic, gentle back bend. Exhale, Tadasana. Namaskar Asana, palms to lightly press. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, Urdhva, extend the air. Bend the knee, light back bending. Exhale, work in front, take the time. Hands out of side of the feet. Inhale, the left leg back, good distance. Ground the knee on top the toes, gaze front. Exhale, top the toes, lift the knee. Dwe Pada, the plank pose. Hold the breath out, ground the knees, squeeze the elbows close, welcome to thighs, belly, chest, forehead, shoulders roll, hips tuck slightly up and back. On the inhale, gaze front, raise to Bhujangasana, shoulders still roll and tuck the toes. Exhale, tuck the toes, bend the knee, push the hip up and back, feet maintained together, distance maintained between the feet, be there. Breathe. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Bend the knees as necessary as you inhale. Left foot all the way front. If the foot gets stuck, give it a helping hand. Get it all the way there. Round the right knee. Untuck the toes. Gaze front. Exhale. Tuck the toes. Right to meet left. Feet together. Folding deeply. Good bend in the knee. Arm in line with the ear. Inhale. Feel and work all the way up. Keep the knees soft and the pants pressed. Gentle back bend. Exhale. Tadasana. Namaskar asana. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, extend. Gentle back bend. Exhale, work from the hip. Hands in line with the feet. Inhale, the right. Round the knee on top of the toes. Exhale, the way apart. Hold the breath out. Sashtanga asana. Inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhale, Bhudarasana. Inhale, right. Take the time to get there. Ground left knee or top toes. Exhale, falling deeply. Inhale, good bend in the knee. Feel a more hole over Palms to press, gentle back bend. Exhale, Tadasana, Namaskar Asana, inhale, exhale, inhale, extend, exhale, fall in front, inhale, left, exhale, the way apart. Keep the elbow close. Inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhale, hip up and back. Inhale, left, no rush. Ground right knee, no top toes. Exhale, falling deeply. Inhale, smoothly up. Exhale, Tadasana, Namaskar Asana, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, right, exhale, the way apart, hold the breath. Inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhale, hip up and back. Inhale, right. Exhale, 
exhale, falling deeply. Inhale, over to back. Exhale, Tadasana. Namaskarasana. Inhale, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Hold the breath, Sashtangasana. Inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhale, Buddhasana. Inhale, left. Exhale, falling deeply. Inhale, Urjva. Exhale, Tadasana. Buddhangustasana. Feet shoulder distance. So quite a good distance between the feet. Toes pointing ahead, hands on the hips, knees soft as you need to, take an inhale. As you exhale, walk from the hip, begin to fall front. Keep the gaze a little front as you fall. Choosing a depth that's appropriate for you. If it's within your comfortable limits, grab the big toes, middle finger, necks and thumb, pat the face. Inhale, lift and lengthen, gaze front. Exhale, falling deeply. Release the head. Lengthen the breath. Next inhale, lift the head concave of the back. Release the hands one at a time to be in front of the feet. Then edge your feet together. Bring your feet together to the centre of the mat. Then bring your hands a little closer so that now hands are return in front of the feet. About a foot's distance in front of the feet. Now you can work from here. Fingertips or the palm. But if it's within your practice, you're just playing around left hand to the left ankle. Still good here, raise the right heel. Recognise the steps. You can be at any. All is well. Extend the right leg back. Toes still grounded. Feels good. Raise the right leg up. But no pressure or force. If you're very comfortable as part of your practice, the right hand can also come to the right ankle and be here. Raise the right leg a little higher. Each exhale, fold a little deeper over the left leg. But don't fight. Not suddenly jumping. Breathe. Softly raise the chest a little, keep turn the gaze a little front, release the right hand if it's on the ankle. This is good, you can release the left hand also for a brief moment. If your right leg was higher than parallel, drop the leg towards parallel to the mat. This is good here, the right hand, fingertips of the palm is on the ground. You can bring your left hand to the left hip and begin to square your chest towards the left side of the room. You can maintain your gaze down. If fairly comfortable, you can extend the right the left arm even up. But the hand can remain on the hip, particularly if there's any challenge in the shoulder. Be there and breathe. A long and steady breath. The revolved half moon, getting a little twisted, with no pressure or force for depth. Super. If you've raised the left hand up, softly release the left hand back to the mat. Support shoulders square to face the mat, to face down even. As you exhale, release the right foot to meet the left. Readjusting your hands so your hands are at foot's distance in front of the feet, fingertip or palm. If this is good now, we balance our practice, the right hand comes to the right ankle. This feels good, raise the left heel and extend the left leg back. Any of the steps are welcome. Very comfortable, raise the left leg, just a very small distance, feel the weight entirely in the right foot, 
Still good. Raise it towards your comfortable leg. Noting each side can be different. Very comfortable. Release the left hand to the right ankle also. Raise the left leg a little higher. Folding as best you can over the right leg. Feels good. Focus on the right big toe. Release the left hand back in front if you brought it to the ankle. Bring the right hand in front for a moment also. Shoulders are squaring down, you can raise your chest a little. If your left leg was a little higher than parallel, drop it towards parallel or so, or you can keep the height. Left fingertips are palm to the mat now. The right hand, with care, comes to the right hip. And slowly, instead of leaving begin to square the shoulders towards the right side. Right hand can remain in the hip. If all is well to the right shoulder, raise the arm. Maintain focus, maintain the gaze and the point down. Breathe really well. Super. Release the right hand to the mat also. With care and control, release the left leg. Edge your feet back to be shoulder distance apart or so. As you inhale, lift the head and lift the chest. As you exhale one at a time, place the tips of the fingers and the entire palms underneath the feet and fold deeply. The toes are working towards the crease like the wrist but no pressure on the wrist. Each inhale a little length, each exhale a little depth. Inhale, lift the head, concave the back slightly. With care, one at a time, release hands to the hips. Knees soft, perhaps bend the knees a little further. As you inhale, raise your torso towards parallel to the mat, and we'll be there for a moment. Recognize the length of knee to ankle often. In many instances, the knees are tracking towards the toes. Can you lean back toward the knees over the ankle? Lift the spine, knees can be bent as you need to. Any pressure on the neck, drop the chin. This feels good. Extend your arms. Now the intention is aligned with the ear. If this is a challenge for your shoulders, have the arms as low as you need to. Don't force or fight. If it's very uncomfortable, have the hands maintained in the hip. As you inhale, push through the feet. Keep the length in the spine. Oh, I feel them. Work them all there. Really lengthen the top. Bend at the elbow. Clasp up to wrist. Form her elbow. Hunch your shoulders up to where you don't want them to be. Then release the shoulders down the back. Sternum smoothly comes back. Next exhale, fold to your right from the waist. Very comfortable, push the hips a little to your left. Be there for a moment. If this creates a challenge to maintain the arms in line with the ears, have the hands down the sides of the body. Don't force for the class. Inhale smoothly back. Extend the arms straight. Palms to press. Please be aware of rest is welcome at any moment, never fighting in your practice. Bring your feet together, toes and heels to touch. Sternum is back. This is good here. 
push the bum back a little. So you'll notice your hip is a little bit behind the heel. Then bend your knees almost to the point that you can maintain your knee over the ankle. You'll notice that the torso will hinge a little front from the hip. Once you've arrived here, start with back for a little. A little drawn back. Utkatasana. The chair pose. Just a few steady breaths. Next exhale, maintain the alignment of the lower limbs, just bringing the arms, the hands rather, to be pressing in front of the chest. Now the intention is to get a little twisted. You can get twisted to your right by get twisted nice and high. Just slightly dropping the left elbow, trying to face the shoulders towards the right side. If it's comfortable, however, similar movement, we're going to hook the left upper arm over the right thigh. But recognize that there's no pressure on the knee. Squaring the chest almost towards the right, very comfortably gaze follows. Recognize where is the left knee. Does the left knee pop in front of the right? If so, can you come back a little? Knees in line. This maintains the squaring of the hip and encourages a beautiful twist through the waist. Inhale smoothly back to center. Allow your knees now to track towards your toes. Pushing your knees towards your toes, allow your heels to raise. As your heels raise, simultaneously bend further at the knee. And the intention is sitting back on the heel. With the heels raised, the spine lifted, palms in front of the chest. If you find this challenging or uncomfortable, you could be leaning front perhaps and having the fingertips for support. Or you could be lifted through the spine, the fingertips on the side for the lecture balance. Maintain focus on the point. Steady breath. Now you can remain as you are. This is beautiful work. But if all is done, your right hand comes to the right side and behind you. This is the tips of the fingers are grounding. The left hand can hook over the right thigh. If you're very steady, the right hand will sweep around the back of the body and search for the top of the left thigh. As you inhale, you sit tall. As you exhale, little twist. Very comfortable, the gaze is also following to the right. Maintain focus on the point. Next inhale, back to center. Very steady, palms to press. This is good here, take time. Base of pelvis, lower belly lightly engaged. Shift the weight a little back, raise the hip up. You're thinking knee back over the ankle. Raise the torso a little, where the head is almost in line with the knee. Sternum is back. Extend the arms in line with the ear, Utkatasana. As you inhale, stand tall, Parvatasana, really length. Resting at any moment, don't fight. No force in the shoulder, no force in the neck. Steady breath. This is good. Next exhale, bum a little back, so hip back behind the heel almost. Bend at the knee, knee over the ankle, Utkatasana sternum, the torso leans a little front, sternum is a little back. Any challenge in the shoulders, hands can be as low as you need to, hands can be even in front of the chest. If you're mindfully applying your practice, mindfully challenging your breath, breathe. Next exhale, if you haven't already done so, hands in front of the chest, twisting to your left now, so be aware you can get twisted nice and high, just slightly dropping the right elbow and gaze to your left also. If it feels good, however, hook the right upper arm, you're thinking outside edge of the left thigh, notice there's no pressure on the knee, palms slightly pressed, 
shoulders are facing or working towards facing towards the left side. Recognize where the right knee is now. Is it popping in front? Can you draw it back if it is so? So knees are in line. A steady breath, little twist, no pressure on the neck. Next inhale, smoothly back to centre. Torso raises a little higher once more. This is good start to shift your knees in the direction of your toes. Allow your heels to raise, simultaneously bending generously at the knees. Sitting on the heel if you can. Spine is lifted. You're aware of your variations. To lessen the intensity, or perhaps you could lean a little front, take the weight into the hands a little. A little further practice, maybe the hand if accessible, if the distance, if they can reach even. Down to the sides of the body and be here. You're very steady, you're here. Palms lightly pressing. Focus on your point. This feels good, endeavouring to get a little twisted. Left hand, left side, a little bit behind. Maybe just the tips of the fingers to the ground. Hook the right hand over the arm, even over the left thigh. If you feel steady, left arm reaches around for the hip. Inhale, you sit tall. Exhale, twist through the torso. Feels very good. The gaze also follows. But don't fight for that. Breathe. Next inhale, smooth the back. Palms come to press. This is good. Start to shift the weight a little back. Bring the heels to the ground. Leaning back to the point of the knee is over the heel or the ankle as best you can. Then raising torso toward the head is almost over the knee. Sternum is back. Very steady. Extend the arms and length here. Zukatasana. And as you inhale, Parvatasana. Really lengthen. Stand as tall as you can. Feet step back to that shoulder distance or wider. Recognize the toes point straight ahead. Bend at the elbow. Clasp opposite wrist, former elbow. If it's very challenging, hands over the sides of the body. Shoulders down the back. Stir on this back. Next exhale, hinge to your right from the waist. Very comfortable. Push your hips a little to your left. Maintain it there for a moment. Inhale back, sternum back, shoulders free. Exhale to your left. Maintain it. Just notice the difference. What's the reaction to the start of your practice when you first visited your side foot? A little further depth being explored, perhaps. Breathe. Inhale, smoothly up. A little bend in the knee. Push the bum a little back, so you're going to hinge front from the front of the hip. The intention is almost maintaining this length from hip all the way to the elbow. Begin to fall front. If this is uncomfortable or challenging for your shoulders, please have the hands on the hip or you can even be with the ankle. As you fall deeply, endeavour to maintain this alignment from the hip all the way to working towards the point of the elbow. But don't fight for that. Super. Release the clasp of the elbows. Grabbing the big toes, middle finger, index, and thumb. Readjust your feet for your variation of Malasana, so the squat pose. Feet can turn out a little, perhaps. And you can release down from this point. But please don't force through the knee, the ankle, or the hip. If it's required for you to bring your feet closer, allow the heels to raise. This beautiful work, too. Your hands could also be gently clasping or pressing even. But if it feels good, you're mindfully applying. Or with big toe. Lift the chest. Chin sets a little back. 
steadiness in your breath, there's length in your breath. Release the hands in front of the feet, shoulder distance apart, fingertips to the pant. Walk your feet back, a good distance towards the back of your mat, you're still working that lining, of feet in line with your wrist, torso back towards the thighs, below the navel is engaged, the downward facing dog, be there for a moment. Next inhale, without shifting the distance between your feet, or perhaps you may necessary, maybe necessary if your hands and feet are too close. Come into the weight part of the plank pose, straight line from heel to head, heels lightly push away. If the feet are a little close and your hips are up, the feet may need to perhaps come a little further back. Just here for a very brief moment. On your next exhale, you can lower down whichever way is necessary for you. You can ground the knees if required. Smoothly releasing onto the belly. Once you're firmly grounded, on top the toes, feet together, toes and heels to touch. You can work with Bhujangas and the variation of the hands next to the chest. This is tremendous work. If all is well through the shoulder and the neck region, perhaps you take the hands behind and interlace. No matter where you are, you're actively rolling the shoulder. As you inhale, raise the head slightly. This feels good, the chest, so upper back, middle back, and perhaps the lower back. And be there for more. Any challenge in the neck, drop the chin. Please be aware that you're not lifting with the neck. So you're not dropping your back of the head towards the upper back. Breathe. Next exhale, smoothly come down. Welcome the chin back to the mat. If you're with the interlace, gently release. Hands are turning either side of the chest. This feels good, feel a little wider. Very comfortable as you inhale, raise the head slightly. Raise the chest and roll the shoulder. So variation of Bhujangasana. So if that feels good, you employ the hands a little. Raising up into the upward facing dog. Keep a bend in the elbow, elbows work a little closer to the body, expand the chest, but no pressure on the neck. As you exhale, keep the good distance between the hands and the feet, bend at the knees, tuck the toes under, push the hip up and back. Adam Mukhishwanasana, the downward facing dog, be there for a moment. If you need to take rest, please do ground the knees, you can only turn to your practice when it feels good for you, don't force. Very comfortable, bringing your feet together, centre of the mat. This feels good, without bringing your shoulder over your wrist, just raise your right foot slightly. Feel that ma you're maintaining the length in the spine. Very comfortable, your wall isn't too close. Raise the leg, and work towards the straighter leg if the wall isn't restricting you. And be there for a moment. Your left heel now is working towards the mat. If necessary, you can have a bend in the left knee, a little practice working towards the straight leg. But mindful you're not fully locking with the neck. Your next exhale, bend really well at the right knee. Draw the thigh towards the chest, one smooth step, or it could be a few steps. Step the right foot through, close to the inside edge of the right hand. And then we'll ground the left knee and on top the toes. Any pressure on the left knee, don't bother triple over the mat as you need to. So be aware of the steps. If this feels comfortable and accessible for you here, so up your raise up, both hands gently resting on the right thigh. This feels good, mindful of your balance. We want to bring your awareness into your left hip. If I were to draw a line straight down from my left hip, this line would hit the ground. I like this line to hit the knee, so back in the hip up. Allow the right leg to straighten. 
straightening into the point that the left hip now is now directly over the knee. Furthermore, a straight line working across the front of the hip, then a slight tuck of the pelvis. Can be there for a moment. Reaction to be experienced on the front of the hip, perhaps even working on the thigh. A small move. And this is good here. Allow the right knee to bend to where the knee is over the ankle. Taking care to tuck the back toes. The intention will be pushing the feet away from each other, working towards pushing feet away from each other and straightening the front leg. Face the pelvic lower belly engaged, hands over the sides of the body. Maintain focus on a point in front to help with the balance. As you inhale, smoothly come up, straighten the front leg. As you exhale, how softly can you bring the back leg down and a bend in the front knee. Inhale, raising up. Exhale, releasing down. Inhale, raising up. Exhale, coming down. Inhale, maintain focus on the point, hips squaring. Exhale, coming down. Exhale, smoothly down. How softly can you land? Ground the back knee and then tuck the toes. This is good here. Your right hand to your right hip, left hand to the right thigh. You can get twisted nice and high. If it's comfortable, however, hook the right upper arm or even the armpit over the left thigh. Palms to press and get twisted from here, but as long as there's no pressure on the right knee. As you exhale, a little twist. If comfortable, the gaze is also following. Be there for a moment. Can you keep the hip pushing a little? Breathe. Next inhale, coming back. Back to center. Release the hands either side of the right foot. The intention here is maintaining the alignment of the right knee in relation to the ankle. And we'll tuck the back toes. Now if this is good, thinking right knee still in line with the ankle, raise the back knee a little. Still good, raise a little first, point of the leg is straight. So note that as you raise the knee, you're not trying to push the hip up and back. Keeping the hip at the same level. Keep the right knee in the same initial alignment. Push the left heel away. Breathe. Next exhale, the right back to meet the left. We'll do a pada for a brief moment. And then the downward facing dog. Bringing the feet together, balancing the practice. Torso back towards the thighs, the even weight in the hands. Raise the left foot just a little. Then this is good, raise the leg up to the point that is comfortable space allowing. Leg straight, keep the space if necessary, bend the knee. You're thinking right heel is working towards the mat now. But if you have any sensitivity in the ankle or the knee, perhaps work with a bent knee initially. Torso still back to the thigh. There's length in the spine. Breathe. Your next exhale, bend well at the left knee. Set the left foot front. Inside it to the left hand. Welcome the right knee to the ground. On top of the toes, any sensitivity in the right knee, you're doubling over mat. Feels good. Take the time raising up, hands on the left thigh. And keep the left foot where it is, but back the hips up to the point the right knee is now over the knee as best you can. Hips working in a straight line. A slight tuck of the pelvis. And a gentle push front. And be there for a moment. 
pretty relevant. Reaction to the experience front of hip, last working on thigh. Super. Then this is good, rebounding the left knee, where the knee is almost over the ankle, with care top the back toes. Hands on the sides of the body, you're thinking feet really pushing almost away from each other, focusing on a point. As you inhale, coming up, straightening the front leg. As you exhale, releasing down. How slow and steady can you work? No rush. Inhale, raising up. Exhale, coming down. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose, inhale, exhale, inhale, maintain focus on the point, hips still squaring, exhale, come Bending the front knee to where the knee is almost over the ankle. On top of the back toes. Left hand to left hip. Right hand to the thigh, getting twisted from here. If all is well, hooking the right upper arm, maybe even the armpit, over the thigh, but no pressure on the knee. Palms to press. Getting a little twisted, feels good. The gaze follows. Recognize the hip isn't coming back. Can you push hip a little front? Next inhale, smoothly come back. Releasing hands either side of the left foot, fingertips if you can work towards the palm. We're thinking that left knee is maintained over the ankle. We'll softly tuck the back toes, raise the knee slightly. Can you maintain knee over ankle? And this is good, raise the knee to the point that leg is straight. Heel pushes away. Be there for a moment, but don't fight. Recognize the steps. You can be at any. Here. Left back to the right and do a part of the plank pose for a brief moment. Then torso or hip even up and back. The downward facing dog, gaze down, sharing even weight between feet, finger spread. And this is going well in both knees, gaze front, right knee behind right wrist, toe line with the knee. Left knee behind left wrist, toe in line with the knee, and gently roll up, standing tall on the knees as best you can. Any sensitivity in the knees, double over the mat as you need to. Mindfully applying, playing with a little back bending. Heel of the palm comes to the back of the hips, fingers pointing down, elbows work towards each other, so your shoulders are rolling, chest is expanding. Initially drop your chin towards your chest, then tuck the pelvis under slightly. This feels good because you feel an arch. As you feel an arch, recognize what's happening to the elbows. Keep the elbows working towards each other. Chin towards the chest. If it's part of your practice, so release one hand back. Still good, the other hand back. But please be aware that it's not bottom muscle towards the heel. Keep the hip pushing front. If you're very comfortable, you can release the head back. But don't fight for a Breathe. Halfway back first, left hand across the front of the body to right hip, right hand to left hip, come all the way up. Once you're up, unravel the hands. The first variation is maintaining the distance between the knees and the feet initially, then sitting down to the point where the heel, the hip slide in between the heel and the bum is to the ground with the spine is lifted. If this approach creates a challenge for you or is uncomfortable feeling knees together, build from here. 
or alternatively any cross legged position is welcome. So choosing which is appropriate and you can adjust at any moment. Lift your spine no matter where you are. Taking the elbows out to the side. A medium bend in the elbows, palms to face front, grabbing an imaginary glass or bottle of something and endeavour to pour that all the way up behind you. Holding it in this up pouring out position. Recognise as you pour out you lift your ribs. Keep the ribs a little back and this will be particularly important as you get twisted. As you exhale get a little twisted to your right but maintain the ribs back. Often we'll flare the ribs to mimic depth. Keep the sternum a little back. Be there and breathe. Inhale back to center. Exhale to your left. Little twist to your left. Feels good to gaze follow. the hands to be in front of the knees, slowly raise a little taller in the knees, tuck the toes, without straightening the legs, begin to walk the feet back that good distance for the Adho Mukha Shonasana, the downward facing dog, torso back towards the thighs, we'll maintain a bend of the knee, and very slowly begin to walk out the dog, but you're not straightening the legs entirely, just real slow and steady walking out, focus the torso back towards the thigh, lower belly is active. With the rest of walking out the dog, a bend in the knees, you can softly walk your legs front or you could hop front, whichever part of your practice, taking care as you come front. See the position, then rolling on your back, mindful if you're close to any solid object behind you. Coming on your back, once you've arrived, thighs in relatively close to your chest, and a little rolling side. Come to rest with the rolling. Keep the thighs close to the chest, but release the hands down the sides of the body. Now with the knees and the feet working towards each other and the thighs close to the chest, you'll notice that the lower back and middle back are perhaps connected with the mat. Focusing towards the middle back, you want to keep the back of the ribs working down and back, creating this, maintaining rather this connection. A mild arch may occur to the lower back as you work, and this can be okay, but mindful you're not excessively arching. Chin is slightly drawn. If you can maintain as best you can these, these initial alignments, allow the thighs to move away from the belly to the point that the knee is almost stacked over the hip. Base the pelvic and lower belly becomes a little active here. Breathe. If this feels good, take your knees and your feet to be hip distance apart, so a little space created between them. Then all is well. Keep the knees in the, where they are with knee over hip, but raise the lower leg up for the shin is almost parallel, the heel coming in line with the knee. Recognize what's happening here. If your ribs are raising, can you draw the sternum back? If the chin is raising, can you draw the chin lightly back? Be it any of the steps. If it's very comfortable, raise the right arm up and raise the left arm up. But draw the shoulders back and down. Long and steady breath. Now if all is well through the neck and through the shoulder region, perhaps you flip your palms to face front, towards your feet, and then you release your arms up and over behind, so arm in line with the ear. If this creates a challenge in your neck, if your chin juts up, if your ribs raise, perhaps your hands are by your sides of the body, feels good you're here, then extend the legs straight and bring the feet together. Push the heels lightly away. Often in many instances we'll bring the legs a little too close, so where the pelvis is slightly top, so keep the legs a little further away. If our ankle, knee and hip are almost in a straight line, stacked over, mild arching through the lower back, but middle back, back of ribs are grounded.
Now this feels good here, with your hands are down by the sides of the body or up over and behind. Bring your arms to the cactus arm. So 90 degree bend in the arms, where there's an elbow to shoulder in line and the palms are facing up. Little practice, begin to take your legs wider, as low as, as wide as space will allow and within your comfortable limit. There's a pelvic, lower belly is active, what's, up, what's happening to the ribs, what's happening to the chin. Don't fight, if necessary, bend the knees. This feels good here. Smoothly bring the feet back to hip distance apart. Extend your arms to be straight up overhead and behind. Then this is good. Begin to bend at the knee, but try to work towards maintaining knee over the hip. That alignment and drop your shin towards a parallel. Then this is good. Raise the arms back up. Flip the palms to face each other. Shoulders drawn back. Be here for a moment. Just a long, steady breath. Softly drop the heel towards the buttock muscles as you exhale, draw the thighs in towards the chest, grab the leg, head towards the knees around the spine, nice tight ball. Inhale, release the head. Release the legs. Release and rest. End of your practice. Readjusting the body to any position that is comfortable for you. I'll be maintaining in a seated position. Be in a lie down position if it's comfortable, legs can be straight, knees can be bent. You could be on your side, you could be on your front. Take a few moments to readjust. How would body like to rest? Eyes closed, mouth closed. When you can feel you've made all the necessary adjustments, body's beginning to become still, body's beginning to become steady. Welcome the stillness. Allow it to move through and to consume and to hold the entire body. Within this stillness, notice there's nothing more required of you. There's no way you need to be right now. There's nothing you need to do. Simply by being here is more than enough. And within this allowing, within this freedom, which is at the heart of your yoga nidra, your yogic sleep, set your attention free to softly move through the body. And just to experience sensation, any vibration, any pulsing, Notice what arises as a result of your practice. At the soles of the feet, through the ankles, the calf muscles, through the knee. Noticing the response to your practice through the thighs, the buttock muscles, and the whole of the pelvic region. The lower limbs, from toes to hips. Sweeping around the back of the body, you notice the response of the sacral region, the triangular shape at the base of the spine. The gentle arch of the lumbar region, lower back, middle back, upper back. Noticing the response to your practice through the shoulder blades. Sweeping around the front of the body, into belly. Any release of unnecessary Effort from holding a belly. Ribs, chest, fingers, any pulsing, 
any sensation or vibration in the very centre of the palm, forearm, bicep, shoulder, neck. the jaw, chin, and the reaction in the tongue, nose, eyes, ear, forehead, crown of head, as you become aware of the whole body. This whole body awareness, from within this deep rest, this deep stillness, allow your awareness to take up temporary residence in the space of the heart, drop in behind the breastbone, at the centre of the chest, be with your heart for a moment. the space of the heart. Allow your awareness to move out through that deep stillness that continues to hold the body until it arrives at the edges of the body, the borders of stillness. Allow it to move beyond. And within this gentle extension of your awareness into your surroundings, allow it to transition to a more everyday awareness. Allowing this awareness to begin to influence your breath into being a little fuller, a little more conscious. Feel how the breath stirs the body, it awakens the stillness. It begins stirring at the toes to welcome the feet back, fingers welcoming hands up into neck, or chin rolls shoulder to shoulder. Feet come together. Arms extend up and over, begin at the feet, point the toes, tie the feet, tie the legs, take a big inhale, belly, shoulder, fingers up, let go of body. Exhale, release. Right arm extended, left hand to belly, falling left knee, roll into your head. Middle hand support pushing up. Any seated variation, eyes remaining closed. Coming to the end of your practice, allowing yourself a moment to notice any difference to start your practice. Drawing your palms together. Rubbing palms generates some heat, welcoming back the nervous system. Place the hands over the ears, gently cup. Extend the massage, short of skin. Take your hands a small distance away from the eyes. Be gentle, brings opening the eyes, gaze into palms. Namaste. Thank you all so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Look forward to seeing you at your next practice.